It is astonishing that people once considered deficit hawks are singing the praises of the new tax law, which is expected to drive up the deficit by one trillion dollars or more. Why? Well, as we have pointed out before on this show, Republicans could use a ballooning deficit as an excuse to gut social programs. But there may be another reason. As a Duke, as du as a Duke University historian recently suggested in an op-ed for The Hill, sealing the case for a constitutional convention. So far, 28 of the 34 states required have passed measures calling for a constitutional convention. A big draw is the potential for a balanced budget amendment, which may attract even more support if there's a huge deficit. Joining me now is Robert Greenstein, president of the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, along with the mayor of Columbus, Georgia, Teresa Tomlinson. Thank you both for being here. And Robert, I want to start with you first. Republicans uh, have very much said that they want there to be a balanced budget amendment um, and that they are willing to use the, the a constitutional convention to get it because they've been unsuccessful at getting it before. I want to let you listen to former Senator Tom Coburn back in October on our show talking about uh, that issue in his own way. We think there ought to be fiscal responsibility on the federal government's part. The average millennial now is on the hook for $1.5 million over the next 50 years. We think the scope and jurisdiction of the federal government ought to be what was intended to be by our founders, which is a role, a limited role, but very specific and very powerful. And then what is not specifically spelled out for the federal government, left to the states as it should be. That's a long-time view of Republicans. It's now, you know, a Republican might consider that perfectly reasonable. Uh, what would be the implications if Republicans were able to get through a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution? The implications would be severe, both for the economy and jobs, and for programs like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Here's why. When the economy weakens, if we near or enter a recession, business activity falls, right? Businesses spend less. They lay off people. There's less business and consumer spending. Tax revenues decline as a result. More people get things like unemployment insurance. The fact that at least tax revenues decline and more people get unemployment insurance helps. It leaves more money in people's pockets and in business coffers uh, to invest. Otherwise, the economy shrinks even more. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a balanced budget amendment, you can't do that. As revenues contract when the economy weakens, you have to cut things like unemployment insurance, cut things like infrastructure in order to keep in budget balance. As the, That makes the recession much deeper. Yeah. So you don't have to take my word for it. Mm -hmm. Macroeconomic advisors, a leading mainstream economics firm, Republicans and Democrats both use, examined what would have happened in 2012 if a balanced budget requirement was in effect and enforced, the answer, the unemployment rate would have jumped to 18 percent, 15 million more Americans would have lost their jobs, and in macroeconomic advisors' conclusion, the effects on the economy would have been catastrophic. This is why nearly all economists, conservative as well as yeah. progressive, have long said one of the worst things you can do yeah. is write a balanced budget requirement into the U.S. Constitution. But states have them. So why is it that states are able to get away with having balanced budget requirements in their constitutions and not destroy them? Aha. Uh -huh. States are required to balance their operating budgets not their total budget. States borrow for roads, bridges, schools, many things. Think of all the bonds that are floating sure. at the state level. Plus, the fact that states have to balance their operating budgets, even in recessions, makes it even more important for the federal government not to have to do that. Otherwise, you get these effects of doubling unemployment. And there's one more thing. Virtually every current proposal for a balanced budget requirement in the Constitution mm -hmm. includes as part of the proposal a very very severe limit in the Constitution for all time on the total amount of tax revenue of course. the federal government can raise yep. at a level lower than what we raise today. So what it does is a constitutional balanced budget requirement of that nature effectively constitutionalizes a requirement to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, because otherwise you couldn't get spending low enough to fit within the revenue constraint. It's, it's pretty frightening, and, and if people, as I played that Tom Coburn clip, uh, Mayor Tomlinson, you were in that clip as well because you were here debating this issue with Tom Coburn. Uh, Republicans have tried to get a balanced budget amendment through the Constitution through the Congress after the Gingrich Revolution in 94. They've been unsuccessful, so now they're turning to this means of trying to get it through the states. 
Can you just explain what that effort is about and uh, what that effort is and how close they are to actually getting it? Sure. Well, when I first started writing and speaking about this subject, it was an eccentric and wholly implausible effort. And now here we are on the doorstep of this actually happening. Uh, there's two ways to amend our Constitution. One is by the federal legislature proposing an amendment and the states ratifying it. That's in Article 5 of the Constitution. That's happened 27 times. We've had 27 amendments to our existing Constitution. Uh, the other way is for some 34 states to request by resolution of the Congress, uh, by the state legislatures to the Congress, uh, that we have a convention of states or a constitutional convention. And so that's what's been going on here. Let me just provide a little bit of context. Uh, this is something that happens about every 70 years, interestingly, uh, in our political landscape as a nation. Uh, in 1790 to 1830, there were the anti-federalists that filed for uh, state conventions, constitutional conventions, uh, to limit the federal power. Uh, then, of course, in 1861, one, uh, the Confederates filed a flurry of petitions to have uh, constitutional conventions to limit federal power so they could continue on with slavery. Uh, then the segregationists in 1963 uh, started an effort of uh, calling for constitutional conventions uh, to limit federal power. Now in 2010, the Tea Party, Mark Meckler, Mark Levine, and some others have actually begun this effort, but they've wised up. They've stopped calling it an effort to limit federal power, and they've called it uh, the balanced budget amendment because that sounds great. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. marketing moniker. It sounds like something we need to be doing, do the laundry, do the dishes, balance our budget, right? And so it has great political palatability and as a result they've gotten 28 of the 34 states they need to actually get this done. They, in my judgment, will get four more this year. I suspect this state legislative session they will get South Carolina, Kentucky, Montana, and Idaho. Uh, then we only have two states and by by that time, I suspect we will have the nation's attention and it will be a full uh, battle in um, the states of Virginia, uh, Minnesota, and Maine uh, to see if they can get two of those last remaining states uh, to sign on. If they do, uh, we will be having a constitutional convention and it will not be limited to a balanced budget amendment, uh, as even Justice Scalia has said uh, and Warren Burger has warned, um, that if you open it up to a constitutional convention, all bets are off. You can amend the Constitution in any way whatsoever. Good gracious. Um, I, it, wow. Um, we're going to bring you guys back on to talk about this a little bit more because I think people are just not aware of it. I know we talked about it. Uh, Mayor Tomlinson last October, but I don't think people get it. We're, think about what you guys just heard. We are uh, four states away from having this actually happen, and you just heard Robert Greenstein explain what the con what the consequences would be if it went through. I'm going to have you guys back, Robert Greenstein, Teresa Tomlinson. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And up next.